Hi, this is Rob Daigle. Our tip for today, technical tip for today, is how to differentiate the internal carotid artery from the external carotid artery based primarily on anatomy. The position of the internal carotid artery in the neck can help us differentiate these two so we know what artery we're on even before we turn on the Doppler. First off, there's a series of steps. I start out in a transverse view and identify the common carotid artery and I position the thyroid gland to the right of the common carotid artery, as we see here in the image. Now this corresponds to having the notch on the transducer essentially pointed towards the shoulder or towards the head or the pillow. Now, in this anatomical situation, when we're coming in from the side, to the left of the screen is actually posterior. Oftentimes this wall of the artery is called the posterior wall, but that's incorrect. If we're coming in from the side, this aspect of the screen is posterior. And to demonstrate that, if you pull the transducer towards the back of the neck, you see more tissue off here to the left of the field of view. The internal carotid artery bifurcates in the posterior direction 95% of the time. So as we scan up the neck, we come to the bifurcation region, and then we see the bifurcation. I know that that's the internal carotid artery, not because of its size, but because of its posterior position within the neck. The next step is to identify which vessel is in the near field versus the far field. The position of the external carotid can be near field, the same side as the internal carotid, or down deeper in the far field. But here we know that the internal carotid is posterior. It's also slightly the more superficial one. So when we go to our longitudinal position, we'll expect to see the internal carotid artery in the near field. As they turn longitudinal and identify the common carotid and kind of sweep up towards the bulb area, I try and come in from a posterior approach, posterior lateral, so I can come through the jugular vein. And this gives us an enhanced acoustic window to view the far field wall of the internal carotid artery. Now, in order to differentiate here from the external, I'll rotate or just tip the distal end of the transducer, the one that's towards the ear, towards the, the mandible and I expect to see the external carotid. There's the external carotid coming off the distal common carotid or the bulb. Again, when I tip that transducer back towards in a posterior fashion, then I'll insinate the internal carotid artery. Now, in a normal patient like this, it's all very clear-cut and straightforward, but these methods can be really useful when there's extensive disease and it becomes difficult to try and identify or differentiate the internal carotid from the external carotid. Again, external and then internal carotid artery. So hopefully with those tips, you know which vessel that you're on even before you turn on the Doppler, and you don't have to resort on every patient to things like the temporal tap or some of these other tricks that are performed. It's a tremendously helpful tip to know which vessel you're on before you turn on the Doppler. That's your hot tip for the day. Now you give it a try.